What's going on, nation? I have a special guest for today's video, and it's Alex from Alpha Destiny. We actually met a while ago because I was looking to improve the size of my neck and traps, and for those of you who didn't see the thumbnail image, Alex has some great techniques that really work. And for those of you who've never heard of Alex, make sure you show him some love on his channel, Alpha Destiny. Now, smash that like button if you guys are pumped for this collab, click that notification bell so you never miss a new video upload, and because this video is packed with so much information, I will be putting timestamps down in the info section below, so make sure you check it out. What's going on, nation? This is Alex Smile for Destiny, and right now I'm showing you some neck stretches that you could do before your neck training. Now, the reason why you want to stretch out your neck is to prevent what we call zingers from rising. And a zinger is basically when you got one strain on the side of your neck or the opposite side. And basically, every time you turn your head up and down, left and right, circular motions, etc., you're going to have a really bad pain that's going to feel very, very uncomfortable. So if you want to prevent that from arising, Make sure you stretch out your neck the way I'm showing you. A combination of static, which is holding the neck in one position, and dynamic, where you do several rotations and going back and forth like you're seeing right now. So once you do this, and I recommend you do so for about 10 to 30 seconds per exercise or two minutes in total, your neck should be nice and warmed up to move on to the neck exercises. Now that you guys are warmed up, Alex is going to demonstrate both weighted and bodyweight neck exercises. Guys, do not skip these warm-ups, especially if you've never done this type of training before. If you do, you'll be in a whole new world of pain because unlike a strain in your arms or legs, you move your neck all day long for pretty much everything you do. So if you strain it, you'll not only be in pain, but you won't be able to mentally focus on anything and your personal life will suffer. But if you warm up and maybe even go through these again as a cool down after your workout, you should just be fine. Now back to Alex. What's going on nation? This is Alex Smile for Destiny and today I'll be showing you some neck exercises you can do at the gym. So the first thing you have to understand is that the neck comprises of three different parts. The front, the sides, and the back. I'm going to show you exercises that you can do for all three of these areas. Using straight weight, bands, neck harnesses, body weight, all that type of stuff. So let me show you the basic exercise first, which is the neck curl. But before I do that, realize that you need to wear a hat. Because if you don't wear a hat, you're going to have ridges in your forehead that might hurt you a little bit. So always make sure that you come prepared. Let me show you how it's done. All right, welcome to the first segment of this neck training video. I'm going to begin by showing you a multitude of neck training movements that can be done with straight weight. Then we're going to go on to more advanced exercises. So when training your neck, no matter what exercise you're doing, you always want to start off with body weight. So no weight plates, just doing the basic movement, which is neck flexion in this case. It's just like your bicep muscle. You're not going to grab a 60 pound dumbbell and start curling. You have to warm up efficiently and then you can move on to the weights. This is very important for maximizing performance and preventing injuries. Now, once you reach a point where you're actually lifting weights, and I'm going to recommend that for beginners, you start with a five pound plate, you can start neck curling. And this is basically where you have the plate on your forehead and you are doing the function of the neck, which is neck flexion. So all you're doing is flexing at the chin very quickly. You're not using your abs or body momentum, nor are you using your hands to assist in the exercise. This is simply your neck doing all of the work. If you feel your abs a lot, it means you're doing it wrong. If the weight flies up extremely easily and you don't feel the neck being worked, it means you're cheating. So always make sure that your hands are nothing more than the handlebar and that they are not assisting you in the lift. And in terms of set and rep ranges, I'm going to highly recommend that you do higher reps because you have to understand that this is a very small range of motion. You're not doing a lot of work. Therefore, you need to compensate by increasing the reps, increasing the sets. And I've personally found that high volume seems to work best with this particular exercise. So give it a shot and then you can move on to more advanced lifts. And by the way, you're eventually going to reach a point where you can no longer hold any more plates, which is about 90 pounds or so. Now, some gyms have thin plates and in that case, you can go upwards of that. But in the instance where you reach 90 pounds, pretty much high rep it. You can start doing reps of 100. And trust me, this actually is very beneficial for the neck. So this is one method of combating the weight issue. You just, you hold on to two plates, right? Of course, it's going to work your grip as well. And you just go very, very high volume, very high reps. And that's what you'd want to search for for this basic lift.
Now, if you want to micro load it, all you have to do is grab rubber plates, as I'm showing you right now, and simply place the smaller plate in the center and grab the plates by the inside, right? And now you can actually do neck curls this way. So it's a very good solution for guys who are limited and they're trying to lift more weight, but they don't want to do 25, 35, 45. Because it's going to happen where if you try making too large of a jump, you're not going to be able to neck curl the weight. So I'm just showing you two ways that you could do this. You could either take the plate, shove it from the inside, or take the plate and put it on the outside. Both of these methods will work just fine for the neck. So with that said, let's move on to the second neck exercise, which is the neck extension. Now this one is rather simple and something you might have seen in your gym. It involves taking a weight plate, placing it on the back of your head, and simply extending. This is the second function of the neck, which is neck extension. Before you saw flexion, this is extension. And all you got to do is lean over the edge of the bench, raise your head up, and lower it down. You're really going to feel the stretch on this one. And the added benefit is that it also works your upper back. So it gives you a synergistic effect. It works your upper back, your upper traps, very beneficial for getting that yoke, if you will. So try out this exercise if you want a bigger back of the neck, okay? This is gonna make your head look wide from the back so that when people see you from the back, they're like, wow, this guy has a huge neck. Uh, the only limitation of this lift is the fact that the plates are gonna be much bigger than your head and it kind of gets awkward. Like you start filling your upper back a lot, more traps. So the small limitation is the fact that you can't go super heavy. So you're really gonna have to high rep it for the most part. But don't worry, I'll be showing you other movements later on that combat this issue. And of course, you can always lean over this side of the bench. This is another way of hitting the neck and it's another way of doing neck extensions and it might combat the issue that I was talking about before for very like a, t a temporary thing, if you will. And of course, it's still limited by how many plates you can put on your forehead. I would say like no more than 45, 90 pounds and you're pretty much stuck after that point. So that said, let's move on to the neck side raise. Now, the neck, of course, it's three dimensional. It's not just in the front. Think about those old school animes that you may have seen. All you're doing in this case is leaning over the side of the bench, placing your hand with the plate on your ear, and you're just extending sideways. And again, this is going to work the side part of your neck. So when you're looking at someone from the front, the neck is going to look very wide. It's also going to make you look wider from the back too. So it has multitude of benefits. And of course, this will correct muscular imbalances that you may have. Because many times when guys do neck flexion or neck extension, one side of their neck will overdevelop more than the other. So this is kind of your opportunity to fix that possible imbalance. So it's kind of like the dumbbells of neck training, if you will. A neck curl and a neck extension is just one side at the same time. It's like doing a barbell bench press, but this is like doing a dumbbell bench press. So that's why it's gonna be very beneficial in correcting your muscular imbalances. And of course it works your neck in a way that it doesn't really offer in the standard ways. So it's giving you that twisting action. So it's a very beneficial movement. In my opinion, it's a must do. Uh, the only thing, however, is that of course you are limited in how much weight you could use because the weight is going to get bigger than your head at some point. And when that happens, that's when you're kind of limited in a sense. And that's why I will be showing you exercises you can do afterwards. But yeah, this is the basic exercise to do for the side of your neck. High volume, four sets of 25. The reps could be even higher. Make sure that you're not cheating, okay? You have to really flex that neck on the way up. On the way down, you got to feel the stretch, full range of motion, and that is how you perform the exercise. So those are the basic three exercises for the neck. Try to max out on the neck curl 90 pounds for about 100 repetitions. Try to get your neck extension to 45 to 90 pounds for 100 repetitions and try to get the neck side raise 45 to 90 pounds for 100 repetitions. This might take you some months, but once you get it done, you're gonna see significant improvements in your neck. And realize this, right? The neck grows very fast. It's one of the fastest growing muscles in the entire human body. So you can progress at a very rapid rate. My advice is to add two and a half, five pounds per session and just keep loading it from there. So that's it for the basic movements. All right, guys, now I'm gonna show you the bridging portion of the workout. So essentially, this is what you do if you don't have a neck machine, you don't have a neck harness, or you've maxed out your straight weight. So if you wanna learn how to get a really big and strong neck using your body weight, try out these bridging variations. And this is actually what Mike Tyson did to get a big neck. So let me show you how it's done. This is what you do if you wanna get a big neck with using body weight only. It's called the wrestler bridge. And I understand a lot of you guys can't do this exercise, and that's why I'm showing you progression schemes that you could do to reach the full bridge. So as you just saw, you start off by grabbing onto the sides and just holding it for extended periods of time. Once that gets easy, you can start rocking your head back and forth and of course, playing with your legs a little bit to get some more tension in there. 
And once that becomes easy, what do you do? Well, you get into that same position, but you take off the hands. So now you can do little motions. It's a small range of motion, just tilting with your hips, tilting with your legs, and trying to go all the way back, really flexing that neck. And once you've mastered that, you can do that for about 20 reps. You start doing the more advanced variation, which is going all the way down with your legs. This is the ultimate way to bridge. It basically involves full range of motion on flexion, extension, and it comes by using like a hip thrusting motion as you're seeing right now. And then the next level is actually to twist to the side. This is actually what Mike Tyson did to get a massive neck. So you're not only bridging up and down, but you're bridging to corners. You're bridging to the left, to the right, and that's going to give you some more side action in there too. So bridging can actually accomplish many things at the same time. It can work the front, the sides, the back, the entire part of your neck. And that's why it's extremely beneficial. So I'm just going to show you another angle right here so you get a better idea for things. Again, you're going front, you're going back. This is ideally what you want to work up to. If you can build up to this variation, you should have a rather thick neck without even having to do straight weight exercises. And also, realize that bridging, all these bridging variations I'm showing you, they could be dangerous, and you do need to have a foundation for your neck before attempting any of this stuff. Especially the one you're about to see right now, which is actually a weighted neck bridge. Now, this involves taking a plate that is behind your head, and you start bridging. And then if you want to take the next level, you could actually do the Mike Tyson style, which is going all the way down, all the way up. And again, this is next level stuff, very advanced. I don't recommend to everybody. Make sure you master the bridging variations and that you're strong at straight weight. I don't want anybody hurting the next year. So there is a warning here, okay? You see, you can also do the full range version with your legs going all the way down. This is very hard to do. So be careful. Don't hurt yourself. Make sure you have a foundation before attempting any of these bridging lifts but they're very effective. Let me just keep you aware of that. Now, if you don't want to bridge, there are other solutions such as plank work or front wrestler bridges. So this is the neck plank, which is actually a very hard exercise. It may look weird, but it's extremely difficult. If it's too hard, you could just jump up in this position here and do the front wrestler bridge, which is arguably the easiest way to do wrestler bridges. You can also put your hands down if you want, if you want a progression, but it shouldn't be necessary for most of you guys. So all you do in this case, if you want more of a resistance, you just lower your legs all the way down, you narrow your feet out, and you try to reach the full neck plank position. Once you're doing the neck plank, like I'm showing you right now, you're definitely going to feel your neck working to a tremendous extent. And this is basically the ultimate level that you could reach for working the front of your neck. This is pretty much all neck flexion. You're just holding it. You're going to feel a nice pump, a nice burn in the front. It's not going to be so much the sides or the back. It's really to get that thickness from the front so that when you're talking to somebody, there's that nice mass popping out. But again, realize that this exercise, although it may look weird, is very hard to do. So that's it for bodyweight exercises. So those are some basic neck exercises. If you really want to get some more development, I highly recommend that you do a lot of traps work because what you have to realize is that the neck connects directly to the traps. So if you get your traps bigger, your neck is also going to get bigger and vice versa. So Scott Herman is now going to show you how to get bigger traps using the chin recover method. And I really think you're going to get the best of both worlds. So let Scott show you how it's done. Thanks, Alex. All right, guys, now let's hit those traps. And before we get started, remember that you should be training your traps and neck on the same day. Personally, I would hit traps first because you'll be exerting a lot more force on the trap exercises than on the neck ones. But if you're new to neck training, you may want to begin with those exercises first just so that you can build a solid foundation with them when you have the most energy. Now for traps, you guys are going to be utilizing my cheat and recover method of training for a majority of the exercises. This is going to allow us to overload the traps with as much weight as possible and fuse enough volume with each set to build muscle. Remember that the cheat reps don't mean that you don't still focus on form, guys. They just mean that you're skipping the concentric phase to overload as much weight as possible on the eccentric phase of the movement and one set of cheat and recover consists of eight cheat reps, then you lower the weight, and then perform eight recover reps where you utilize perfect form during the concentric and eccentric phases of the movement. All right guys, so the first exercise is the above the knee rack pull. You're gonna do three to four sets of eight to 10 reps. And for this exercise, you're not utilizing cheat and recover, mainly because the whole point of this movement is to overload your traps with as much weight as possible. So with that being said, as you guys can see, I am using wrist wraps to allow me to hold on to that barbell. We're not trying to work on our grip strength here. We're trying to attack the traps with as much weight as we can. 
Also, if you need to, it is okay to wear a weight belt throughout this movement. The last thing you want to have happen is your core fatigue and that prevent you from lifting as much weight as you can. So, make sure you do each rep, don't let the weight bounce up, come to a complete stop before performing the next one. The next exercise in your trap training is going to be the power shrug. Now when performing this movement guys, obviously it's again, you want to use wrist straps so you can keep your hands on that barbell, but we will be doing cheat and recover. That means we're going to do 8 cheat reps using a bit of momentum throughout the first 8 repetitions. And then as soon as you're done those reps, you're going to lower the weight on each side. Typically what I like to do is cut the weight down in half, maybe go down like 60-70%. But usually cutting about half the weight out is going to work for most people. And then as soon as you cut the weight down, you're going to get right back into position and do your next set of 8 repetitions focusing on both the concentric and eccentric phases of the movement. You'll also see that I got rid of my wrist straps for this part of the movement because you simply aren't going to need them when doing the recover reps because it's weight that you can handle for proper form, not the massive overload. Another variation of this movement is the reverse power shrug, again utilizing a barbell and some wrist wraps and as you can see Alex is powering through using a bit of momentum to lift as much weight as possible. The third exercise is the power shrug using dumbbells. Now essentially utilizing the same form, you can use wrist straps if you'd like to. I'm not throughout these two movements, I just don't need them, my grip strength is strong enough. But again, you're going to be doing cheat and recover with this exercise to focus on the overload on the cheat reps and then utilize the recover reps to get the same amount of tension throughout the concentric and eccentric phases of the movement. It's really important guys when you're doing the recover reps that you're not using momentum and the reason why we're doing this is because we've overloaded and fatigued the muscles so much with the cheat reps that we're going to make the concentric phase of this movement that much more effective. And the last exercise you're going to do for your traps is going to be a farmer's walk. And for this exercise, you're going to do three to four sets, and you're basically going to walk 30 to 40 feet. Now, obviously, you can walk farther if you want to. Depends on how much room you have. And you also notice in the beginning that I was using wrist wraps for this because I'm not trying to work on my forearm strength here. I'm simply trying to overload my traps with as much weight as possible as I walk back and forth. So make sure you keep that core tight, your chest up, and load as much weight as possible on the exercise. Alright guys, now that Alex and I are done showing how to train your neck and traps with barbells and dumbbells, Alex is now going to show you how to utilize bands for neck training. Alright guys, now I'm going to show you some basic exercises that can be done with bands. The benefit is that the weight is unlimited. You don't have to be restricted by your grip strength, by holding heavy plates over your head or your forehead. You're pretty much covered with bands. And you could also increase the tension by lengthening them out a little bit more, doubling them, or just increasing the resistance. So the weight capacity is pretty much unlimited. You can attach them to a variety of different areas. And there's tons of weird variations, if you will. So I'm going to show you everything that can be done, and I think you're really going to benefit from it. So let me show you how it's done. If you want to take your neck to the next level, I highly recommend that you use bands. Simply because there's no such thing as a weight limitation. You can just improve the band tension if you want to get more. And the benefit is that with a band, you are actually lengthening it as you do the exercise. So you can see right here, the band lengthens, and this causes me to flex my neck much harder. At the same time, the negative is going to be much more pronounced because the bands are actively pulling you down. This is kind of like a cable machine, but you're doing it for your neck. So this is a very good way to build a neck. It's constant time under tension. It's constant squeezing. You can really feel it working more than the straight weight. And the benefit is, of course, you don't have to be limited by holding heavy weight plates in your hand. You don't have to be limited by what is available in your gym. So bands will take care of everything. So you just saw me do the neck curl. This is the neck extension. So again, you can do neck curls, neck extensions. There's so much you could do. So all you gotta do is take this band, place it on your forehead or the back of your head, and get to work. Now, if the band starts getting really heavy, you could squeeze your legs on the bench like this. So it's a rather simple solution, and that's all you gotta do. So neck extension, neck curl. I'm showing you all the various angles in which it can be performed. And uh, the benefit also is that you don't have to cheat with this. It's gonna be much harder to cheat if using bands compared to straight weight. With straight weight, you might have that inclination to do a pullover, but with bands, that's never really gonna happen. So it's a smooth exercise that could be done. Now, if you want another way of hitting your neck with bands, then you can actually attach it to a power rack or any stationary object for that matter. And now it's kind of like you got your own 
head harness. Isn't that amazing? You don't actually have to buy a head harness. All you need is like a hat to secure yourself and you can get to work. So this could be done at a park. It could be done in your house as long as it's a secure object and you basically don't have to be limited ever again. So this is the neck curl as I'm showing you right now. And of course you could also hit the back of the neck. So all you gotta do is flip around and there you go. Now you can do neck extensions. So again, there really is no limitation in weights. And that's something that it really is a problem with straight weight because you have to hold these heavy plates and you can't go as heavy. So with the neck, you completely eliminate this issue. So I just showed you the front and the back. Uh, you could also hit the sides, which I'll be showing you very quickly. And basically, I didn't involve the one on the bench because that's a little bit awkward. So for the side of your neck, all you got to do is take off your hat, place the band on it like this by attaching to a power rack, and now you can do little twisting motions. And again, this is a benefit that straight weight does not offer. With straight weight, you could do lateral bending. You could flex sideways, but you can't actually twist like I'm doing right now. So if you're an athlete of some type or you're getting hit in the head constantly, this is going to mimic a sport. So you're kind of getting some secret benefits that straight weight doesn't really offer. Now, if you're feeling a little bit audacious, well, you could try out this next method, which is doing the neck exercises with a band in your mouth. Now, some of you guys are like, what? What is the benefit of doing this? Well, it has secret jaw building benefits, which could give you a nice masculine look in the face. And of course, it's gonna be very beneficial if you're a fighter. So if you get hit in the face constantly, this is gonna be very sport specific in a sense. It does look weird. People are gonna look at you weirdly, but you know what, it does work. And this could be done for the front, the back, and the sides. Just place the band in your mouth and get to work. By the way, if you're worried about cleanliness, all you gotta do is take a Scott towel or a piece of sweet and attach it to the band. So now you don't have to worry that you're holding this band in your mouth. And that's pretty much gonna take care of your needs. Hope you enjoyed this band training segment. Now, in the beginning of the video, we did mention that we would show you how to train your neck using a neck harness. However, when you first start training, the majority of you will not need one as the progressions we have shown will be enough to see gains, especially when using bands. But if a neck harness is something that you have available to you, it can certainly be very advantageous to your neck training. So, with that being said, Alex is now going to demonstrate for you guys how to use a neck harness. So if you have a head harness, this is going to be the part for you because it's very, very versatile. You can use a lot of weight and there's tons of unique variations that could be used. So again, a head harness is not necessary, but I believe that it's really going to revolutionize your training and make things more interesting. So let me show you how it's done. Welcome to the final segment of this neck training video. So this time around, it involves a neck harness, which you have to buy with your own money. Sorry to tell you, but nonetheless, a neck harness is an excellent piece of equipment. I highly believe that it's going to revolutionize your training forever because now you can do exercises that perhaps you were not able to do previously, or it just makes your life a lot easier. Like you don't have to put bands in your mouth or on top of your head. It's just a very, it's very smooth and it's premium stuff for the most part. So I want to show you the mass building exercise for the neck, which is the neck extension done with a chain and head harness. This is pretty much the number one movement for the back of the neck. Nothing can top it. I believe that out of everything I've shown you today, this is the most important lift, hands down. So if you could just do one exercise for the back of the neck, make this your go-to. And this is pretty much what uh, fighters and field athletes all over the world are currently doing. So neck extension is a must do. The second lift is gonna be a neck curl using the same apparatus. So this time you take the chain, put it behind your body rather from the front, and this time you can really get a nice weighted stretch. You notice that every time I lengthen my head backwards, it really pulls on the sternocleidomastoid and it gives me that deep stretch. And the weighted stretch is key if you're trying to build muscle. So this is more of a negative specific exercise than it is a flexing exercise exercise. So definitely give it a shot. If you want to overload your neck a little bit more, try out the neck deadlift, which not like you can't really do this with other exercises. Uh, this time around, you just take some plates, load up as many as you can and stand up. And this will teach you how to isometrically contract your neck. This is going to allow you to use heavier weights when you do neck extensions. So this is a very good exercise for overload. And you can do like a push press type of style where you, you bend the legs and you try extending. So very good exercise right there. Now, if you wanna make your training a little bit more fun, you can actually do bands with this head harness. I know I showed you band exercises before, but with the head harness, you don't actually have to hold the band. Like there's absolutely zero cheating, even though it's unlikely to happen with the regular bands. And it's a lot more smooth. It's a lot more comfortable than just having a band straight on your head. So a head harness is gonna give you a nice, more uh, fluid motion. And if you have it, I mean, you might as well use it. You might as well do it this way than the getaway that I described previously.
And you see, you could also attach it for like from different angles. You could do these exercises on your knees. So you could have a, you could be on your knees and the band is directly above you. You can even do neck extensions this way, you see? So there's lots of uh, exercises you could do with a head harness. It pretty much combines everything I showed you before with the straight weight, but it turns into a more versatile piece of equipment. So I recommend like, if you got the money, definitely invest in a good one and do realize this, right? If it's a bad head harness, you're gonna be missing out on some loops and the quality is not gonna be good. The comfort is not gonna be there either. And there's also risk of tearing it off your head. Now, if the head harness rips off, that's an injury waiting to happen. So you wanna make sure you invest in a good one. And of course you see right here, I'm also hitting, I'm doing the neck curls. So neck curls, you can do neck curls by using bands, man. Just attach the bands to the chains of your head harness and you can get to work. It's very freaking simple. And of course, guess what? You can do the sides too. So you could do lateral bending like I'm showing you right now. Just take the band, put it on the side of your loops, right? And now you could just bend like this very simply. And you could even do twisting motions if you want to get some additional benefits. And the benefit of the neck harness is that it's going to feel a lot better than putting a band directly on your head. Like it just it just feels better this way. So you could do the, the, the bending sideways and you could do the twisting. So it kind of gives you a little edge over the standard way of just having a regular band on top of your head. So that's what you do with the head harness. And then finally, you can actually do wrestler bridging with the neck harness. This is next level stuff, very, very advanced. I don't recommend it for everybody, but simply you attach the bands to your head harness and then you take some mats, put it underneath you and you could do bridging. So you can do all the variations I showed you before. This is a lot better than the standard way because now you don't have to be limited by holding these plates in your hand. You can move your arms freely. So I'm doing the Mike Tyson method as I described before where you kind of go to all three sides and that's honestly the best way to build your neck by using uh, body weight movements. So that's just another way of spicing up your neck training. These are all the variations that you can do with a head harness. It pretty much covers you on all levels. So hope you enjoy these exercises. All right, guys, that's all I have for you today. I really hope you enjoyed this video and learned a thing or two about neck training. Once more, I want to thank Scott Herman for having me here today. He's a great guy, really dedicated to helping people out. And with that said, I will talk to all you guys next time. Alex, thanks so much for joining me today. If you guys want to see more collabs, be sure to leave a comment and smash that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, more good stuff coming soon. See you guys.